Henceforth, you get the word. When you put chains and fetters, you chain the hands, you chain the feet, you get the word handicap. Your mind can't do it, and if your mind is doing it, your body can't perform it. Ain't that a people to be here? And we know people that their body can do it, but their mind can't. And we know people that their mind, come on, their body can't. Ain't that something? I asked my wife, I said, what in life? We was on our way home, and we was talking. I said, what in life have you ever wanted so bad that you're doing for? You ever had those thoughts? What do you want so bad that you'll, you'll do anything for it? To just to get it. That's a handicap. Because Ephesians 3 and 20 says, now what he was able to do, it seems, I will not walk through life retarded and handicapped. Right. Say that with me. Say it. Say it. I will not walk through life retarded and handicapped. You know what's really is for Moses to go through all of those different things and stand there looking at the promised land but never enter into it. Wow. Preaching about it for 40 years. Talking about it. Dreaming about it. Heard God say it to him. He could see it but couldn't enter into it. Wow. I don't want to be like that. I declare in the name of Jesus we will enter into our promise. Yes. In the name of the, yes, we suffered a while. Yes. We're going to enter into it. Yes, we were misunderstood. But we're going to enter into it. Yes, they, yes, they ostracized and criticized. We lost some things. Lost people, but we're going to enter into it. Let's go to our uh, next one is how God's word changes my identity. I never know who I am until God speaks to me. Go to, uh, go to Acts chapter 26 quickly. Some folk don't even know who they are. They're trying to be something that they're not. And that's how Lucifer entered into his demise. Pride assumes responsibility for a false identity. Pride assumes responsibility for a false identity. When you don't know who you are, pride says, I tell you. Mm -hmm. There's a song that me and Pastor Terry got, and I wish we could play it right here and, and, and don't link in the service, but what's the name of the guy? They said, pride is the devil. Oh, they go. They yeah. yeah. And this guy to hold on me. Pride right is the yeah. devil. A lot of R.I.P.s. That song just ministered to me because some people are dying because they don't know who they are. And pride is st steady telling them. That's why when you build something, you fall on your face. That's why when you go to do something, you fall because at, when you have pride, it's the beginning of destruction. No matter what you do with pride, it's always going to fall. And longevity does not mean success with pride. Because there are a lot of people that are prideful for a long time, but they fall really hard and really bad. I watch, I watch these tele-networks, these, these, uh, these televangelists, and they build their ministry off of pride and ego. Not even humble, not not having the heart of God and the, the heart of Jesus concerning ministry. It's all about their bottom line. <clears throat> and they master the art of, 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 of entertaining people with, with you know eloquent uh, sayings and and, and, and colloquialisms and, and, and vernaculars and, and using corn phrases and cliches and, and motivating people. Right. And then at the height of their ministry. No more glory on their name. People don't even respect them. They fade off into the sunset. I don't want to let pride go before my destruction and pull me into it. Right. Right. Let me say this again. Pride assumes responsibility for your identity when you don't know who you are. It's very important because as human beings, we can become whatever we want to be. That's why Jesus, knowing that he was God, needed John the Baptist to confirm something openly. This is the Son of God. Giving sure identity to him. So read the text, babe. Listen to this. Listen to Saul. Amen. Acts chapter 26, verse 14. Saul is in a situation here. Listen to this. Acts 26 mm -hmm. and 14. Yes. Let me lay a foundation before we go while she read this. Now listen, this is very important. Am I teaching right? Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, come on say yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This right here is very important to us. 
because Saul was killing the church, but he thought he was pleasing God. That's what pride does. You could be destroying something in the name of God. And what is that? You could be a destructive energy in the name of God. What is that? You could be killing people. Now here, here's the thing about Saul that you didn't quite understand. That the Romans and all of these people, this was an art form of torturing people in the spiritual jihad. Jihad is a religious war. It is a biblical battle. It is a battle of history. And that's the reason why we are all with other countries right now. Not any, they not, don't have anything to do with oil, money, currency. It's all to do with spirituality. But if you notice anything about the Romans, the Romans had this art of making you say uncle. They love, they built, they, that's where boxing come from. All hand-to-hand -hand combat. And all, they, they had a way of making, entertaining people with your demise. Killing you in front of people. Making two people hurt, hurt each other in front of people so they can profit off of it or get some type of gratification. That's a sick, diabolical spirit. Right there. You have people like that in the church today. They don't even want to be a part of safe place. They just want to get some type of gratification, some type of fee, some type of, you know, some type of pay off of causing destruction amongst us who are in agreement. Right. That's why God said, I hate the person that's so discord amongst the brother. Yeah. I hate that spirit. Yeah. But if you notice here, Paul, now here's the thing. When Jesus, oh my God, when he saw Jesus, his heart was pure. He thought it was pleasing God because this is how graphic he was. He loved to when the church went in exile, they hid themselves. He loved to find them, search them out, send posses to get them, but don't you kill them. Bring the pregnant women to me, especially those who are needing to have a child. Want to cause a badge of honor for some women. I got to birth something. He said, bring all of the saved women to me. Let them be mine. And he found pleasure in taking a knife and cutting the baby out and let it dangle in front of everybody. Mama bleed out the baby dies. Cut their hands and they made him a champion. He was feared by the church. Saul was feared by the church. Not only would he find apostles and disciples, he would try his best to crucify them in such a way that it devalues and it, and it debunks Jesus being crucified. No, mocked it, yes. You notice these are the same people that took John, and who was on the Isle of Patmos, put him in hot liquid oil, burned his eyes out, and left him on the island to die, but he was able to see and write revelation. Yes, sir. Oh. Oh. They got joy out of it. You'll see in the Old Testament how they put Shadrach, Meshach, and that bad Negro in a fiery furnace. And stood outside just to watch and see what's going to happen. Put Daniel in a lion's den. But it makes no difference what you put a believer in. As long as I keep believing, I can come right on out of it. Somebody shout glory in the house. Glory. Bless the name of our God. So, so now read the text, man. Acts 26 and 14. Yes. And when we were all fallen to the earth. Yes. I heard a voice speaking unto me mm -hmm. and saying in the Hebrew tongue, mm -hmm. Saul, Saul, why persecuteth thou me? Yes. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Mm -hmm. And I said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus. Thou persecuted. Yeah, see, 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 now from this moment forward, God's got to change his thinking. And so, in other words, to change his thinking, watch this, watch this. I cannot change your identity unless I change your thinking. God goes in and changes his thinking. How does he change his thinking? He gives him a new purpose. And you cannot define purpose without a name for it. It's got to have a name. That's why they call people. He's stupid. It defines a purpose. You're broke. It defines a purpose. What's your purpose? Can't buy nothing. You know. You have a desire. You wish. You have a wish sandwich. A wish car. A wish house. Wish spouse. Everything you wishing for. So we call you broke. You broke in. You're not together. You can't find your purpose. So to get 
to give life to purpose, you've got to give it a name. So he shifts his name from Saul to what? Paul. Raul. Foundation. Apostolic. Engineer. Pioneer. So he shifts his name to something great. From something that was so linear to something that was great and grandiose. His name goes from Saul to what? Paul right here. But he's on his way to kill somebody. So I didn't. I'm losing y'all because I know it's one o'clock. I'm losing y'all. He, he's on his way. So the voice of God gives true identity. Satan's voice, your voice, will never give you true identity. It will never give you true foundation. It can never give you these things. So if your identity is changing, it will be God. Right. For the better. Ain't it something how we think we're right? And God comes up with something that shifts your whole identity. That's a, come on now, I wish I had an amen in here. Y'all making me work too hard. Hey, ain't it funny how you could be going along with good intentions, but it's not God in you. Yeah. And there's a difference. I'm meant to do well. I'm meant to do good. I'm meant to be a blessing. And ain't going to find out sometimes your blessing can be misunderstood. And you wind up fighting trying to bless somebody. You say something to somebody, they, they take it the wrong way. Hallelujah. So, so listen at this. He speaks. He speaks in such a way that it shifts the plight of who I am. And I like God when God says right in the midst of being the black sheep of my family, I called you to be the first member of that. I called you to be the first author. I called you to be the first pastor. The first entrepreneur. And you know at the beginning of that, they didn't trust me. The church that I come from, I had just got out of prison. I went there in the We were worshiping the Lord. The church, the church got broken into it. They sent the saints to my house to see if some of the stuff was in there. Because they didn't trust what God had to change. God can change you so drastically. He can change you so drastically. Change your identity that the people that think they know you didn't even know you at all. And here's the, here's the misnomer. Here's the misunderstanding. God, I feel your power now. That they didn't know that you were wanting to change all along. I, they didn't know that you you were tired of selling drugs. You were tired of being in that lifestyle. You were tired. I know you were tired of holding up that image that you don't take no junk from nobody. I know you were tired, tired. And so God came in. Yeah. Yeah. Gave you a new identity. They yeah. didn't believe you, did they? Matter of fact, when Saul went to Peter, he got blinded. He went to Peter. They don't bring him up in here. That he knew was crazy. He's killing everybody. Are you sure? For a while, they would not even believe in Paul's ministry. Come on. Right. You hear me? Just to judge for a while. And then for a while, they won't believe in sound line. Moving from North Carolina, they believe in But some little, he got a little fancy. He was B looking for some honey. <laughs> God said, I, got, I know what you like. I got to put in front of you what you like. To bring you to a place so I can birth something in you that's going to outlive you. I'm in the Holy Ghost today. He knew exactly what he's doing in this season. Come on, say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's just you got to believe it when people don't. Write that down. you got to believe it when people don't. When God speaks to you, then he spoke to you, not to them. So you got to believe it when people don't. Yeah. They didn't, he didn't speak it to them. They're not gonna understand it. They're not gonna. They're not gonna. They're not gonna be in agreement with you at first. Can you handle the fact that everybody gonna leave you when God changed your identity? But after He solidified you, fortified you, grow you, guess what? Then they'll come around. Then don't listen. Don't push them away when they come around when you blow up. Let them come around because God need them. Testify about the goodness of God. David said he prepares a table before me in the presence. Not in the absence, but in the presence. Not when they're not on Facebook, but they got to see it. They got to be there. They got to experience it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. Hallelujah. Turn and tell your neighbor, say, I see your table. 
Tells her I see your table. I see it right there. You ain't looking in the right place. You looking all over trying to make your way. Sit down at your table. Tell me, take your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm going to take a seat. I'm going to take a seat. I'm going to take a seat this time. God ain't got to twist my arm. He ain't got to make me say, uncle, I'm going to take a seat at my table. Because it's been too long, y'all Hebrews. Come on, somebody. Y'all been talking about me? You've been lying on me. You didn't think I would make it this far. You left me for dead. Yes, you did. You didn't think I would grow up to do what God want me to be. But this time in my life... I'm going to take a seat at my own table. It ain't got nobody's name on it. God, I feel like preaching today. I said it ain't got nobody's name on it. This table says Reginald Jermaine Rogers Sr. And I'm going to take a seat at my table. And I'm, every time I eat something, I'm going to stick my tongue out. Because I'm going to say, devil, you're trying to kill me. You're trying to destroy me. You tried to take me out, but I heard the word say, Now I'm to him who is able to do it freely and abundantly above all. Sit down a minute. Let me get finished with this right quick. Life. God, I feel it. Clap those hands and say, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And when you get to your table, you got to get there. And you can't get there. You can't get there timid. You can't get there shallow. You can't get there depressed. The when you get there, command the room and say, as for me and my house, we gonna serve the Lord. Don't you sit at this table unless you go time. Don't sit at this table unless you don't give. Don't sit at my table unless you don't worship. I feel my heaven now. I feel joy now. I feel power now. Why do you feel it? Because you didn't think that God would take me and set me at the head of all tables. Now I can say I'm rich through the grace of God. I'm here through the grace of God. Say it. Say my table, 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 my table. When you get to your table, wait for your anointing, because he anoints your head before, and your cup run over. I'll find your name out, and say, name Thank you. They got 
Listen, listen, listen to me. Babe, get it, uh, Exodus 3 and 3. And I close with this. Amen. I think, I'm doing, I think I'm doing pretty good with this, right? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You love the Lord, say I love him. Thank you, Lord. All right. That right smell good. Exodus 3, 1 through 4. Y'all, we appreciate clean rags. The one time somebody gave me a rag, it smelled like some stuff and it burnt my face. I said, nope, you're not going to wipe my face with that. Can't put that on. I'm not going to do that. Read it, baby. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, Listen to this. his father-in-law, Yes. the priest of Midian. Come on. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert. Moses is leading the flock to the backside of the desert. Come on, sheep. Come on. And came to the mountain of God. Because if you can't lead what God wants you to lead, don't try to lead what you want. You got to be willing to lead what God placed in front of you. Sheep, nobody wants to wants to follow them. Some some of the sheep they do just like women. They, they have the same setup as women. Ovaries, everything, the inside, the same setup as women. Come on, somebody. Wow. So they have the ability to go on a menstrual they menstrual things and stuff like that. So shepherds have to be skillful in in you know leading sheep because some sheep they act crazy. They have attitudes. And I'm told I've never been had this experience other than in the spirit. But the sheep bites. Sheep bite sheep the sheep's teeth can the, the, the way the shepherd determines the growth of a sheep is best based upon looking in their mouth. And when you look in their mouth, you can tell how old they are, how mature they are. And when sheep get teeth, that means that they're seasoning and maturing. Yeah. And when they turn on you, the teeth is not meant for carnivorous uh, activities like chewing meat. It's for cutting grass, eating grass, pastures. So the teeth is not designed to bite. And they're not aggressive animals. But every now and again, they become temperamental like humans. And they turn around and bite you with teeth that not supposed to be, you're not supposed to be bitten with. The most painful bite you can ever incur is not from a, a spider bite, a snake bite. Because if a shark eats you or an alligator eats you or something like that, you ain't going to feel it anyway. It's over with before it starts. When it starts, you get consumed, right? But to be bitten by a sheep, you didn't expect it. You didn't see it coming. And it was painful. It's, it's very painful to be bitten by somebody you trust that don't have that temperament. You ever had somebody turn up on you that you know that they, they ain't even about that life? It's painful when you just, you know, get betrayed by someone who you was nice to and they was nice to you. It's hurt. It hit a little different. Hurt, don't it? When you find out the real intent and meaning behind someone. Ladies, you identify with this man tell you all the things he wants you to hear. But as soon as you, uh, glory to God, as soon as y'all get in a relationship, you look upon his social status, his handles and stuff, and come to find out he's living a foul life other than the one he's portraying in front of you. That's hurtful. It is hurtful, hurtful situation that you met this girl from out of another state. It's a hurtful situation. You met her. She's from another state. She came to this state and she's this new person. And you fell in love with a person who has a wicked background. And now some of the wickedness that they had is creeping into y'all's relationship. I'm talking to somebody on live. It's creeping into y'all relationship now. And you wonder what's up with this girl. And you did your research, come to find out she's still connected and rooted in all kind of dysfunctional things. It hurt, it hit different. When it come from a place, when pain comes from a place you didn't expect, 
when it comes from parents, when it comes from loved ones, when it comes from uh, a supervisor that, that mentored you and trained you, and you find out that they're trying to get you fired. It hit a little different. It hit different when you trusted that coach, when you trusted that person that was a father figure and told you you had this kind of ability and told you that you heard that they wouldn't even believe it in you, they didn't want to play you. It hurt. It hit different. It hit different. Lead those things. Read, babe. Now watch this. Go ahead. Even to Horeb. Yeah. Verse 2. Mm -hmm. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. I'm going to come back to this next week. How God will speak out of the midst of burning situations. How he will speak. Yeah. You, you listen, some people don't think God will speak through burning, consumed situations. He's just not listening. And the Bible said that this bush was on fire and Moses turned to it. And when Moses turned to it, God spoke through it. Some things God will use, that pain, that burn up stuff that just to sometimes get your attention because you're all of your emotions trying to figure it out. And you're using your emotions to try to figure it out. And it's causing you so much more. It's furthering the destruction and the pain. And oftentimes, this is a bush burning. But what if you're the bush? What if you're on fire? I know we talk about Moses on the outside looking at the bush. But what if people are looking at you and you're on fire? Can your life speak? Can your life speak something while other people are watching? Sometimes God will set you on fire just because He needs to say something to someone else. I like I've been like this for all my life. God don't do me like that. And you'll have a choice in the matter. You'll be living your best life. And all of a sudden. And your marriage is in trouble. But people need to see that. Because church is a pretense place. Nobody goes through anything. Nobody suffers through anything. Nobody is expressing the troubles of walking with God. So oftentimes God will. God will. Cause your finances to be in trouble. Yeah. Everybody thought you was a bone. You were you were, you was shopping and doing the best thing. Mm -hmm. You know, going places and having good fun and all this stuff. And you were the you know you were people's relationship goals and people's bucket list. I want to do this. I want I want to be like them. Then God, yes, sir. You can't keep a dollar in your pocket. And you're like, Lord, what is happening to me, God? I can't believe you're doing this to me. God, I want, I want a backslide. I want a, I want a serve a God that's going to make me broke. Shut up! Your life is on fire for someone else to watch. And when they turn towards you, they're going to hear God speak out of you. You're coming to that next week. But lift your hands and say, Lord. Lord. I serve the Lord. 